give me an honest answer to this question. So while you have your SNAP exam just tomorrow in less than 24 hours, I'm sure that you've not attempted a lot of SNAP mock tests, have you? Well, the reason why I'm asking this is that while you may know that what kind of questions come in that, what are the question types and all of those things, if you've not attempted enough number of mocks for SNAP, you would have not been able to fine tune your attempt strategy and the attempt strategy, the way you attempt the final exam, the exam can make all the difference in how much percentile you score. Therefore, while for CAT, I was saying to you that, hey, whatever strategy you have finalized for yourself, you should stick to that and all of those things because I know that you would have attempted a lot of CAT mocks. For SNAP, I am telling you that this is probably one of the most important videos which you will be watching. And therefore, do watch this and follow this attempt strategy for your SNAP. Most likely, your attempt strategy will either be very similar to this or even if you're somebody who has no attempt strategy at all, you'll find an attempt strategy in here. Hi, I'm Darpan Saxena, an MBA graduate from IIM Udaipur and let's get on with the video. So while you were watching my IIM Calcutta vlog series, I came back to my studio to record this for you to let you know about what your attempt strategy for SNAP has to be. So let us go back to my slides and let's understand the SNAP exam quickly because there is there's something which you need to know about SNAP and which is exactly all of these things which I'll be sharing that the duration of SNAP is 60 minutes. It's a one hour exam from 2 p.m. to 2, 3 p.m. And the number of questions which you will be having in the exam is 60 questions. There would be 60 questions which you have to solve in 60 minutes. Further, SNAP exam will happen three times. There will be three slots in which you can attempt the exam. So which means you can attempt it three times within the same year. You can go for it in all the weeks. You could go for it and attempt the exam thrice and give yourself three chances. Now further, the marking scheme is plus one for the correct answer, whereas a minus 2.5 for the incorrect answers. So which means that while in CAT you had a 33% of negative weightage in SNAP, you have it at 25, which is lower. So hence, probably attempting more in SNAP makes much more sense. Now, what I'll be sharing with you is something interesting that why probably SNAP, SNAP is probably the easiest exam out there. And I'll explain it to you all from data, all from logic. So just Hear me out over here. Now, the exam structure broadly has three sections. The first one is general English, what you know as VA. Now, it has verbal ability, it has reading comprehension, and it has verbal reasoning in it as well. In SNAP, it's called general English. You will be having 15 questions from this. From there, the second one is analytical and logical reasoning. This is similar to what you know as LR. Now, again, this has 25 questions. And from there, the third section is basically quant, which is quant, which has your data interpretation and also a question type called data sufficiency. This has 20 questions. Overall, you have 60 questions. Now from here, one very important thing, and this slide is very important for you. You know, this, you know, you know, right at the start, I'm sharing with you certain very crucial things. Let's look at the cutoff. What is the target? Because this one small table of cutoffs will reveal a lot of things to you. Now, SNAP has been following the same pattern only for the last two years. Hence, only these two cutoffs will mean a lot for you right now. Now, the reason why I have shared with you the scores for the 97 percentile and the 98 percentile, the reason for that is because 97 percentile is a very safe percentile for SCMHRD Pune, whereas a 98 percentile is a very safe percentile for SIBM Pune. These two are the best institutes which you'll get with SNAP, through SNAP. So these are the two which you should aim for if you are a serious aspirant for it. Now, one very important thing which you can see, one very simple thing which you can see, which will give you, which will tell you a lot about SNAP. We are saying that each correct answer gives us one mark. The cutoff for a 97 percentile is, is as high as a 40 or a 43, okay? Which means that out of 60 questions, you need to get 40 to 43 net 
correct questions for you to get into SCMH RD, which means that you should attempt or aim to attempt at least 50 to 52 questions. Now we're talking about attempting 50 questions from an exam which has 60 questions. What does it say to you? That says to you that probably a student who's scoring, who's cracking 43 questions correctly, 40 to 43 questions correctly and is still ending up at an SCMH RD, that means that the exam is a really simple one. That means that the questions are really easy because you don't see these kind of high scores in any other exam. Just know this one thing that in CAT, as a general, as a general thumb rule, what you'll know is that, that the score for a 99 percentile in CAT is approximately 50 percent of the overall score. So, pura exam ka jo score hai, number of questions in 2, 3, uska jo 50% score hota hai, usually that is the score which you get for a 99 percentile in CAT, 50%. Whereas here, even 97 percentile is much higher than 50%. That shows you something that yes, probably, probably snap is easy with 50 attempts to be made in 60 minutes. In a question paper which has 60 questions, you need to drive this thing in your head that SNAP is easy, obviously. This one slide is something, you know, which sums up broadly what your attempt strategy is that even if you don't watch this video further from here, which you should, by the way, this one slide which is in front of you reveals your broad strategy ki bhai aapko saat minute mein you need to make a target of 50 questions attempt. Now obviously, this also depends on the day. Snap is also unpredictable. It could happen that suddenly the exam is not so simple. And while you in your head are like that, okay, 50 to karna hi hai mujhe attempt, the exam is so hard that probably the scores drop. So you need to have that kind of dynamic approach to this exam. However, this would reveal your broad strategy. Now from here, from here, I will quickly run you through what are the question types which you will encounter in each of these three sections. However, I will be quickly speaking about them because after that, I will be speaking to you about the attempt strategy. What should be your sequence of attempts? What should be your time which you should allocate to each section? All of that is very important. Also, if you're enjoying this right now, do not forget to subscribe to the channels and, and hit the like so that you will get more such videos from my end. Now, let me get back to this and I'll start off with the section one which is general English. These are the broad important question types which come here. You can see reading comprehensions, passages and poems. Now usually you don't encounter this in CAD but this is there in SNAP. You, you know you will also encounter poems in ZAT and these are not easy. But yes you should know that they are here. Then 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 again, what you can see is grammar, fill in the blanks. These are the kind of questions which you've not encountered in CAT, but are there in SNAP. Uh, then you have analogies, homophones, which are similar sounding words. Para jumbles, you know from CAT. So yes, apart from these two things, which is reading comprehension, passages and the para jumbles, everything else is something which you've not seen in CAT. Therefore, I was saying this to you even when I was making those 30 days to cat videos for you that as soon as your cat is over or even in that schedule, I had made sure that you attempt some snap mock tests because this exam is different. However, what I must say to you is that these questions are not tough. So even if you're somebody who has not studied for them separately, but you have attempted a few mock tests, you will be able to solve it out. They are simplistic. You will be able to have the same kind of questions in NMAT. So agar aapne NMAT bhi agar diya hai, if you've attempted NMAT, you will, you will experience something similar in SNAP. From there, let me go to the section number two, which is AR and LR, analytical reasoning and logical reasoning. Now, the kind of questions which come here, obviously, are never seen before in CAT. You might have seen a lot of these in, in NMAT, but not in CAT. 
So if you are an NMAT aspirant, you know the drill, you know what these questions are, you know what coding, decoding is, you know what blood relations is, you know what numbers and alphabet series are. So this is something which is different in SNAP, but again, allow me to say this to you again, allow me to remind this to you again, that these are simple, these are not, these are not hard. So even if you are an aspirant who, you know, who's not really studied for SNAP, but is still attempting the exam, do go ahead and just look through some of the questions from, you know, from SNAP so that you can have an understanding that, okay, how to approach these, these are simple. And obviously, if you're somebody who has been preparing well for SNAP, you know these circular arrangements, linear arrangements, not southeast west direction questions, all of them, they come in analytical reasoning. Whereas if we now speak about logical reasoning, even the questions over here are not the same as what you'd find in CAT. These are broadly the four kinds of questions. And now while just seeing at my slides might not help you, but after you watch this video, which you should watch up till the end, because at the end, I'll give you the attempt strategy. You should go back probably take one mock test if you still have those hours with you or just go ahead and look at some questions from there. Now from there, let me go to the section number three, which is quant, quant data interpretation and data sufficiency. Now in last year's snap, just the last year's snap, which is snap 2021, we did not see data sufficiency questions, but that does not mean that they would not come. In fact, the name of the entire section is DS data sufficiency. It's in the name of the section itself. So you must always expect it broadly in front of you are the topics which are important for snap. You have algebra, ratio, proportion, percentages, time, speed and distance. You have number system, geometry, trigonometry and obviously DI and DS. From here, what you can see is trigo is probably something which, you know, we say that, hey, cat, you can skip it might not be so important for cat. Obviously, we say the same thing for the DS. It does not appear in cat at all. So in SNAP, what you will observe is that the weightage of these topics is also fairly equal. However, it's not always like that. So what happens is that and and this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of students appear for SNAP more than one attempt is that Across the slots, the weightages of these topics will change. For example, if you know, for example, in for example, in the last year, one of the slots had a very high percentage of weightage of number system questions, whereas the other two slots had more questions from algebra and from arithmetic, which means what? Which means that if you're somebody who has not studied well for number systems and if you were in that slot, you were at a disadvantage. So do not take any of these topics lightly. All of these are important for the simple reason that you do not know what kind of combination of questions will appear in the slot in which you are. And the sad part is there is no normalization across the slots. Just like in CAT, where there is normalization across the slots in SNAP, there is no, there is no normalization. It is out there on their website. You can see it. So, so which simply means ki jo bhi us slot mein aaya, wo aa gaya. Jis bhi slot mein aapka highest score hoga, that will be considered and that's the end of it. There would be no normalization across the slots that is what you should know now let's get to the meat of this the most important thing which i've kept for the last because you had to understand what the paper is like which is the attempt sequence very important now very important my dear friends focus on this now what are the important things which we know about this we know two things that there is no sectional time limit and there is no sectional cutoff which you need to clear now isn't that great but that's where the problem is that because there is no time limit in that one hour with 60 questions, you need to be a bloody good manager of time for you to maximize your score. You cannot get stuck at one place. So that is the thing which, you know, which I will advise you that how in those 60 minutes you can end up attempting 50 odd questions. You know, when I was an aspirant in 2015, I remember this, that I was so clueless about SNAP, you know, 
you have to see me for this. I was so clueless about Snap because my mind was so much fixated on cat, 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 cat as an aspirant that I went into my Snap this thing. I had attempted a few, a few, um, a few of the mock tests, but I went so clueless in it that I did not even attempt enough number of questions in Snap to give myself a fighting chance. So even though I had attempted so many questions, maybe they were all wrong. But because I had to go to the Snap exam, how much I had to take the score, I didn't know that. I applied the CAT strategy in Snap and I probably didn't even attempt the amount of questions I needed to give myself a fighting chance for SIBM or for SCMHRD. Probably, I would not have been able to do the Snap exam for SIBM or for SCMHRD. I would not have been from I am Udaipur. I would have been from SCMHRD or from SIBM. So you don't know that. Therefore, attempt strategy is very important. And in this one very important thing is that your sequence is very important because when in 60, you know, in 60 minutes, you have to bulldoze through the paper. You have to just crush it from start up till the end that means one thing is very important for you what is that one thing which is very important for you that one thing is momentum right from the get-go right from the first question which you attempt you need to build momentum so that it will help you build your speed and and it will help you get through the questions easily therefore my advice this is the golden advice which you need to keep in your mind it depends on who you are. If you're somebody who's strong in QA, who has a general affection towards QA, who likes QA, then this is probably what your attempt sequence has to be. QA followed by analytical and logical reasoning followed by general English in the last. Whereas if you're somebody who is strong in general English, then I would just reverse this sequence. I would say start off with general English Go to arithmetic and sorry, go to analytic and, and logical reasoning and then go to QA. Now, one simple thing, I am not advising you to start off with AR and, and LR. Usually these questions, they take time. I don't want that in the first few minutes, you start to feel that pressure on you that, hey, I have not attempted enough because towards the end when you have the pressure i am sure you will not be able to significantly suddenly increase your attempt so right from the start you need to quickly get some runs on the board and hence you need to either lead with qa or lead with ge whichever whichever is your strength you need to lead with that that is the important thing in it now that is not enough for you to know what you need to know also is that how much is the time which you need to spend in each of this this table will answer it for you because i have helped you budget that how much time you should spend on each area now whichever area you are stronger in you can probably adjust this slightly but here is what i would advise in general English budget the first 10 minutes and try to attempt around 12 to 15 questions in that. That should be your attempts. I'm not saying 12 to 15 correct. That would that would be a different story altogether. But, but target to attempt 12 to 15. From there in AR and LR the you know my advice is that go ahead and probably give yourself 25 minutes on it that is what will help you give yourself 25 minutes and try and attempt 20 to 22 questions in AR and LR you can do it and then give 20 odd minutes to the QA and try and score something around 15 to 18 attempts in that at the end of it you would have planned for 55 minutes. Your aim should always be to give yourself 5 minutes spare. Plan for only 55. In the remaining 5, solve more questions. But plan for that much. And by this, you would end up attempting this much questions. These many questions. At least 47. And at most 55. When you attempt these many questions, you give yourself a fighting chance to score a 40 or a 42 or a 43 or even a 44. I don't know. So this is what your time and attempt strategy has to be. 
obviously now say suppose if you're somebody who's not so strong in quant but is stronger in va sorry in general english then probably you might say that okay i'll spend two to three more minutes in va and not spend it so much on say on a quant so you can make minor adjustments in this but this is what i would have followed this is what would have been my attempt strategy you can take a screenshot of this and obviously if you have those hours with you right now when you're watching this you might even go ahead and attempt a mock test of snap it might just help you i know snap is not a very high high stakes exam for you you know we aspirants are not wired in that way that we'll see exams like snap as very high stake because for us cat is everything you know which is wrong but however <clears throat> however this attitude of yours that okay snap is just another exam this is probably the winning attitude for you because snap in your head is not a big event and you might just go to that exam and with your casual and a very easy going approach you might score really well in snap that is what happened with me in sat in so many other exams that is what needs to happen with you finally one one very important question which a lot of aspirants have which you will have tomorrow after attempting your snap that should i take the second and third attempt of snap well i'll not answer that right now i'll leave it for some other video after you've attempted snap because i'll help you logically understand that whether you should take more attempts or snap or not i'll help you logically understand that so do subscribe to the channel and like the video so that you will get notified whenever i'll be sharing with you that video on my channel i hope you enjoyed this i hope it gave you breakthroughs i hope it helped you solidify your strategy i will dearly await your comments and also from here let's get back to the i am calcutta vlog series Good night and goodbye.